Hey, we're live. Are we? We're hot, live. Hot, oh, hot man. Dang, man. <laughs> uh, I want you to know it's been a struggle. Technology has been kicking my butt today. Um, we got a few things changing around, a few things jumping around, and uh, mm-hmm. trying to get our feet under us. So here we are. Hey, man. It's all a process, right? It's all, it's all a process. We're, we're figuring it out, chugging along, and before too long, we'll have it all squared away. Correct. Yeah. One way or the other. <laughs> yes. Uh, might break everything, but no, we're not going to do that. Um, jumping right in. We got some cool stuff that happened this past week, dude. Man, it was a uh, it was a pretty awesome week. Um, There's a lot of big things that's happened, man, overall. Yeah, let's start off with Brazos Bend. Man, uh, I know some of y'all probably saw the post, but Michael Ruiz knocked out his first 100-mile ultra marathon. Yeah, dude. That, <laughs> that's wild. It was absolutely wild getting to getting to see him get out there and knock that out. Yeah, he and knocked. I'm, go ahead, sorry. No, go go. Come on. Go. I was just say, I mean, even then, you know, it wasn't just like it wasn't at the um, you know original course. Correct. It wasn't at the original date. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of changes that that went into that, and uh, dude, it's pretty pretty awesome. It was a uh, pretty awesome. You know, I mean, uh, it's one of these spots where it took. To me, everything within him to finish that race. He was uh, he came down to the wire. I think we had, what, nine and a half minutes left or something like that when he crossed the finish line? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just just a tick of uh, time more than old Billy did. That's right, yeah. Pretty <laughs> comparable end, in that one. But, I mean, dude, I mean, both of them couldn't, couldn't down to the wire, but hot dang, they did it, so. Yeah, it was a good time. Man, oh, wow, what a cool time. Just group effort, everybody coming together and and – Pulling out what I – he's going to talk about it a little bit, but he actually ended up tearing his calf muscle. Um, and, yeah. Is that, is that what y'all were talking about? Yeah, he tore his calf muscle. So, oh, to do a yeah. marathon length with the calf muscle torn, like, holy crap. So, uh, you say marathon length. Was there, like, a specific time when you were pacing that you can reflect back on, like, where there's like, a, a moment, I guess, where he thought that happened? He told me it happened. Oh, yeah, really? He was like, I think I tore something. Well, we kept going. Hey. Like a good pacer should, man. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we yeah. made sure he got across that finish line. That's what matters. That's right. Not to mention Kendall had yeah. a successful outing. Absolutely. Yeah, Kendall got out there, did her thing, freaking knocked it out of the park like usual. Um, man, it was, it was pretty dang awesome getting to see her get that accomplished too. Yeah, so. she did absolutely phenomenal, man. I I didn't get to be privy to it. I was ended up pacing for most of the time she was out there, but mm-hmm. either way, it was a neat thing. I mean, seeing her continue to get successful in that that running realm and now be able to get back to the weightlifting side is gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think she's she's a little excited to get back into the uh, into the weightlifting world a little bit. I think she was, um, you know, she she does thoroughly enjoy running but she's kind of looking for something different just for a little while so yeah after yeah. knocking knocking out both rock and roll and prize has been so it's awesome yeah man what a what an awesome situation but i will say let me tell you i will say that one of the coolest things i think that happened this past week besides that awesome awesome finish besides Kendall knocking out that marathon is we have somebody within our next in line network that got into a pretty dang prestigious race. And I think we need to take a second to celebrate him. <laughs> Man, that, that was just completely unexpected. Um, Mr. Chris Barnes, he's uh, he's going to be out there running Leadville, man. Yeah, Chris Barnes, congratulations on the entry in the lottery pool for getting into Leadville. Holy crap, dude. I don't know the statistics on it. Do, do you know the statistics of getting into that race? I don't know. I, I really don't. I think it's like one in, I'd be guessing one in three, uh, which makes sense because my dad, myself, and Chris put in for it, and Chris, Chris is the one it. that got in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I didn't know if it was as difficult. Um, I was watching a documentary um, called Lucy's Dad, by the way. That's what it's called, and I highly recommend watching it. I don't know if you ended up watching it. I did end up watching it. Um, but to the same, like I don't, I didn't realize how uh, difficult it was to get into that race. Um, I think it was saying 
Man, I, I'd be guessing now. 40,000 tickets that- are awarded. How you get a ticket for uh, getting into Western States and opportunity to run it is you place or you run a race uh, that's eligible for qualification in a certain time. And that's how you earn tickets. That's right. But it's only like 300 folks are, are selected to run. Yeah, 40,000 entry tickets are granted and 300 and something spots are pulled. Yeah. Absolutely that insane. That is insane. So it's it's cool yeah. to be knocking on the door and being involved in, in the network of some of these prestigious races that, man, we've all heard about and thought about. And I'll, I'll let Chris tell the story. I'm sure we're going to have him on here. But, um, man, the coolest thing, whenever he got his laptop for starting Access Recovery – he placed Leadville as his background. He said one day. Really? Yeah. Heck yeah. That is yeah. awesome. I, I had no idea. Yeah. And, and here he is, dude. I couldn't be more stoked for him. Shout out to Chris. While we're Heck on yeah. it, Axis is actually a big sponsor slash uh, partner for the podcast. You dying right, man. We have a discount code. A discount code. <laughs> 10% <laughs> off your visit whenever you mention that next in line since you buy. So make sure y'all guys take advantage of that. If you're in the Houston or Conroe area, cold plunge, sauna, full out recovery. They got Norma Tech boots. They got stretching places, rollout spots, and not to mention an environment and culture and an expertise that is second to none. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, if, I couldn't think of a better place to recover if you're going to go somewhere. Um, so be sure to stop by. Yeah, man, we hit a good run this morning. Me and old Div got out there this morning at about 445 in the morning and, uh, Hit the trails and knocked out about nine miles, and I know I could have used some recovery after that, and then the additional session. <laughs> I was like, my my session, you know, yeah, I mean, we knocked out nine miles. Um, in some cold weather felt great out there. Um, yeah, you know, I just I, I do truly thrive in that colder environment. But um, then you went out and doubled that. So. That's right, baby. We're like <laughs> down twenty seven miles in the training block today, so it was pretty cool. Uh, just going out there and and running the dang thing man but uh it's it's all in preparation uh I actually signed up for another race that i haven't mentioned in the past uh i'm gonna be running frio trail run i think it's put on by texas outlaw running company mm-hmm. um where's that one out again it's That's, in lakey okay yeah uh, lakey texas on the 20th it's gonna be a 33 mile race and man pretty stoked uh, a little bummed i'm not participate in participating in bandera this weekend but It just wasn't in the cards. It wasn't the right time. I'm not where I need to be to be out there. Um, Kelly, uh, who has been helping coach me and and get my feet under me, she's going to be out there participating in the 50K tomorrow. So pretty stoked about that. Excited for her. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, she's she's from that area, and she's just, man, jam up good person as it could be. Helpful, so knowledgeable and experienced, too. It's it's cool to see that. Um, But, yeah, man, that's what what I got burning as as, as far as that goes. But you know what? I did have a big takeaway, and this might get a little bit controversial, but I've been thinking a lot about New Year's resolutions. Mm I've been thinking about the whole New Year, New Me thing, and thinking about how, like, 90% of those things fail. By day 12. By day 12. By day 12. uh, That's something I saw on the interwebs yesterday. Um January 12th is supposedly known as National Quitters Day. National Quitters Day. <laughs> yeah. Well, put that in your pipe and smoke it out there. Um, highly unfortunate. <laughs> it is highly unfortunate because I, I hate seeing people give up on something that they, they care about. I yeah. mean, they're, they're genuinely in the zone of, but whenever it comes down to it, I guess the point I was going to make with that is that the reason a lot of people fail is because they are literally insane. They're yeah. insane. Yeah. Definition of insanity? Just going through doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results, right? Correct. Yeah. And it got me to think a little bit further in. It actually tied back into Michael's race a little bit. Um, man, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. If somebody truly doesn't want the change, they truly don't see the own internal motivation, they don't see that they have to make a change and they feel like they have zero options, then in a lot of ways you end up pissing in the wind, trying to help somebody, trying to talk to somebody. And the reason that ties to Michael's race is I think there's a prime example of it. You see, folks, we'll get into it, and I don't want to spoil anything from Michael's story, but we got into the final lap, and he was taking about 
two hours to complete a loop, mm-hmm. right? And we had an hour and 55 minutes left when we started the final loop. So we were cutting it close, all right? It was on the edge there. Heck yeah. And now looking back, <clears> torn <throat> calf muscle, ton of soreness, just exhausted. The dude starts boogieing, starts moving, and we're going, right? I'm pushing him. We're yelling, probably cussing a little bit too, but yelling. We got mantras going. We got all kinds of stuff. We're just putting out into the universe, trying to keep the train on the tracks and give him a shot at hitting that time because we've got less time than he's been going around yeah. in to complete this race. Big, scary, back against the wall kind of moment. Mm-hmm. But by the time we got to the end of this thing and to the last aid station, I had realized a while ago that we were safe. We were going to make it. And when we got to the half mile mark, Michael looked at me and asked, how much time do we have left? And I looked at him and I said, we got 24 minutes. Now, if you're not familiar with pacing and walking and running, you can just about crawl half a mile in 24 minutes. If you had to. If you had to, probably, yeah. So, with that being said, and him upright and with trekking poles in hand, there's no way he was not going to make it in. And let me tell you, I was able to motivate him. I was able to bargain with him. I was able to get him to buy in and trust me over and over and over over the course of this last loop and give me just a little bit more and a little bit more effort with the purpose of completing this thing in the allotted time and getting his buckle. That factor was right in front of him. The The stick was out and the carrot, carrot was dangling from the stick. But the minute he understood that he had no way he wasn't going to finish this race, there was nothing I could do to make him run, to hmm. make him push himself further. And that's not a slide on him. Dude was exhausted. Yeah. He tore his freaking calf muscle. But it just reiterates that point so beautifully that – if you don't have the internal factors, some dude around you could be jumping up and down, yelling, screaming mantras in your face, motivating you every step of the way. And if you don't have the reason to make the change or to have the push, it ain't going to happen. If it's a non-negotiable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I just thought that was. that That's I mean, that's my first time hearing this. And um, I think that's, you know, again, the, the epitome of that would be, you know, an instance like that. And again, you know, not Mike, I mean, no slight against you, dude. You went, you went out there and you did the dang thing and, and uh, you powered through stuff that I know I'm not aware of and, and stuff that I probably can't really comprehend. Um, but I mean, it's the epitome of that example. I mean, what you're talking about, it's just, it's, uh, it's relatable. So man. And that's, I think that's a big reason why people start these, these new year's resolutions and these new year, new me kind of things and, and then fail yeah. because the reason and the drive behind it isn't personally big enough for them. They feel the societal pressure they feel the outside. They feel the embarrassment whenever whenever they go to the gym and they, they aren't as active or they see somebody in better shape or they're making food choices and they're self-conscious about what they're eating or sneaking snacks or whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. They feel those pressures that it's all external. It's not internal. It's not grabbing you. It's not going, right? I think, you know, the other part of that too is, you know, if you, if you know that you have um, – like that safety net behind you, then you tend to make those, those exceptions. And, yeah. you know, that's unfortunately, you know, that's, that's what's put you um, where you're at today. You know, if you're continually making those exceptions for yourself and you're wondering why you can't get something accomplished, I mean, you gotta look at yourself in the mirror. You do. I mean, it's a golden opportunity as well. It's a, no, I mean, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's not a, it's not a negative or a slide or anything like that. It's all perspective. Um, but I mean, that's the biggest opportunity you have is, is going through and, and taking ownership of that. Yeah. And, and now that you understand that it is internal, 
self-evaluate, take a self-assessment, be very real with yourself, and maybe, maybe you aren't a victim to, you said Quitter's Day? <laughs> National Quitter's Day. <laughs> National Quitter's Day on January 12th. That's, shoot, that already passed. There, we're well, a little late yesterday. on this topic. Yeah, yeah. But there you are. If you're looking to get back into it or if you, you're in the uh, woes of regret right now because you uh, you were part of that 12th or earlier than the 12th, a little something to chew on. You know, the other thing that I do want to add to that is, you know, you got to be patient with yourself too. Um, you know, m- myself, I didn't get it the very first time I tried. Um, you didn't get it the very first time you tried. I mean, we've both been in those shoes where, it's like, damn, I'm going to go out and do this. You get to day two, day three, day four. Um, and then you start making exceptions and you fall off the train. Um, but realize that, again, it's it's just got to be a non-negotiable. It's like taking quitting off the table and everything else. I mean, it's it's got to be a priority. And there's just no exceptions. That's so. 100% correct. And I'd like to also add to that. I mean, nobody out there is perfect in this. And it is a, um, I mean, it's a daily challenge. And there's going to be days where you are absolutely not motivated whatsoever. Um, there's days where all you're falling back on is is the habit itself. And, um, you know, I think it's just realizing that no one out there is perfect, regardless of what you see on Instagram um, or, you know, from, from any of the fitness influencers that you see, or, or, I mean, even business, um, gurus out there, whatever it may be. I mean, everybody's got their struggles on day to day basis. Um, but again, it's just making it a non-negotiable promising to yourself that you are going to go out there and, and do what you say you're going to do. And, um, just taking advantage of the opportunity. I couldn't agree with you more, man. I I think that's exactly right. I think there's a there's a ton of examples of exactly what you said. And man, uh, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a hard segue here. Um, but I think a lot of that falls within diet uh, diet as well, right? And one yeah, of the it's completely relatable. It's probably yeah. one of the heaviest heaviest spots for this this failure in this New Year's resolution kind of conversation. Yeah, um, diet, nutrition, finances. Um, I mean, throw it out there. They're all relatable. They're all aspects that people, um, you know, are continually striving to improve as you should. Um, you know, if you're not working towards anything, then you're complacent. And and like we talked about last time, I mean, it's a dangerous place to be. It's a very dangerous place to be. And, uh, man, the reason I brought up diet is because there's a big event happening this week too. There's a really bad storm, mm-hmm. some bad weather, some crazy stuff going on. Um, and first and foremost, we want y'all to make sure you take care of yourselves. We want you to make sure you're safe. We want you to make sure you're doing everything you can to to keep your family safe as well. But also with that, the odds are in the cold weather, some point you're going to be making some chili. And <laughs> And if you're making chili... I hope that you're putting beans in your chili. That was uh, that was my hard segue. Heck no, man. If you are a true Texan, by golly, you know better than put some beans in your chili. Hey, I got to tell y'all. So we've been having this debate for a long time. All right. This is not a brand new thing. There's a reason it's here in front of the podcast. Um, we actually brought it up to the entire group whenever we were at the race last weekend. Um, had differing opinions. Had some weird opinions. There are some some opinions that that kind of transitioned as the as the conversation went along a little bit. Kind of invalidated themselves as well. I'm going to call them out. Billy Pitts, my dad. Um, <laughs> what in the world are you doing with your chili, dude? Um, first and foremost, kind of confused see your, by that too, <laughs> dude. Super confused by it. To be honest with you, I, I've I've known him my whole life. I've ate chili with him hundreds of times, probably at this point. And uh, wow. Okay, so uh, my dad <laughs> agrees that beans do not belong in chili, which threw me off for a loop because I've watched him eat beans in his chili his whole uh, whole life, and or my whole life at least. And uh, then he follows up with, yeah, but then you make a pot of beans afterwards so that you can mix them in separately, but you don't cook them in the chili. 
I was like, what are you talking about? It makes zero <laughs> sense. Uh, I mean, you know better than I do, man. And you don't know nothing, so. Well, I guess not. I, <laughs> what I do know is uh, we're going to put Lane's chili over some pasta since he wants to have meat sauce out here. <laughs> It ain't it ain't meat sauce, man. It is true, true blue chili. I, I don't know what else to. I mean, it's it's the way it is, man. It's something. That's where I leave it. I think it's, I think it's a disgrace to leave beans in your chili, but I, I'll let bygones be bygones. I'll accept what you say, but I'm not gonna accept the fact that you cook beans separate and then put them in the chili later on. I think that's no nice okay. To me. I, I don't agree with Common what your dad there. said. I don't agree with what your dad said. I mean, yes, to the fact that beans don't go in chili, but Billy, I mean, we, we do need some clarification on your end, man. I mean, first you're telling us they don't go in there, then you're cooking them on the side, and then you're throwing them in there, and then there there's another part of it saying why don't beans go in chili. And, you know, I think for me – Whenever uh, Sam Houston, which for those that don't know is the father of Texas, says beans don't go in chili, I mean, I'll I'll know what other leg you have to stand on, man. Man, I've seen some very, very big political figures say some stuff that uh, I don't think is true and that I don't agree with. And if one thing is true, uh, politicians lie. So, um no, no disrespect to him, but um, I don't, I don't think he held the keys to the castle as far as the chili recipe goes. Um, no, he just but, made Texas home. I mean, he did something. He, he, he did do something. He did some great stuff. <laughs> he did, and he's from. I, you know what? I actually found something out about him. His family is of Italian descent, and that's why he makes meat sauce <laughs> rather than chili. Um, yeah. Man, you can shut that blog down. Everybody knows that ain't true. <laughs> well, it's worth a shot. So, um, regardless, man, I just... So, do, do Aggies even, even know that? I don't, I don't know if they do. Just because y'all got a big old statue up there of... The man that makes meat sauce on the side of the highway in Huntsville. For those of y'all that don't know, I'm an Aggie. This man sitting over here beside me is a Bearcat. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we have our differences, all right? Um, we don't always agree on everything, but um, I I would like for y'all to weigh in. So in the comments section or uh, in the DMs or in your story, let us know how wrong Lane is. Better please. yet. Maybe, I think we should put out a poll. What do you think? I think we could afford to throw the next in line uh, story on there with a, with a with, chili with a poll. poll option? Okay. Maybe so. Maybe I'm so. here for it. Yeah, I guess so. You'll see the you'll see the uh, light of day, you know, come. Um, about to be blown away, man. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, so... Guys, thanks for bearing with us through all the uh, the BS and the craziness that is is this podcast. And uh, man, we had an awesome week. I, let's let's leave it at that. We had some awesome people do some inspiring things. We had Chris getting into Leadville. Uh, we have some other people signing up for some awesome events. We got races on the horizon. Um, we've got an opportunity to teach Lane about chili. Um, but <laughs> more than that, if you remember, we were diving into some scripture as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think last time we talked about going through and knocking out chapters four through seven. And uh, I think that was a little naive of me to say that we can get through four through seven in, in a week. I think this ended up being just a little bit more dense than we expected it to be. Um, I Both of us were naive in that regard because I, I went right along with you and thought we could pull it off. Um, and, yeah. uh, and, and like a sad ducky, I was... Uh, <laughs> mistaken sorry i had to throw it out there i had to do it i love you dude um again this just shows how if you watched last episode you know what we're talking about with the sad ducky and it just shows how green we are and how fresh we are um i know i'm gonna make my fair share of uh of miss misquotes honestly it, it ain't just gonna be one word off i'm gonna completely get this thing wrong and wash it out so i mean pre pre-recording you know there, there's another instance of that it was uh beatitudes 
And it's actually what was it? Beatitudes. Beatitudes. Sir. Beatitudes. Yeah. Yeah. So save save that one for the off camera situation, you know. Yeah. But but yeah, man, I if you're good with it and you're ready to go, we've had some good conversation. But I I'd like to get into this because I man, I thoroughly enjoyed reading, and I'm still and thoroughly enjoying uh, reading and learning in Matthew right now. Um, there's a fly. No, or a no. bug. It's like a moth right in Lane's <laughs> face right now. Um, with all these bright lights we got Ooh, going, boy. man. You catch them? You're dang right. Regardless. Some quick hands from uh, All Natural Chili without <laughs> beans. Man. Them starches slow you down all son. Well. But real quick, before we do dive into Scripture, I do want to say, you know, we, we are constantly pushing out, you know, all the activities that we're doing. We would love to hear everything that you're going into yourself. Um, if you got anything you're training for, if there's a new training uh, block that, that you're just starting up in, or so you do, even if you need help in anything, um, you know, this community is, is what we're about, and, you know, we want to be a part of it. So yeah, let us I was, know. I was going to say that as well. I think that uh, if you've got something out there that you're training for and and you've got a training block that's a little bit intimidating, uh, let us know. We'd love to help you. That's what we do. We, we we take on challenging things and scare the crap out of ourselves over and over. That's what we're doing here with Scripture. That's what we did this morning with some runs and stuff. So mm-hmm. we're here for the hard stuff, guys. Let us know how we can help. So, man. but all right, man. Well, you ready to dive into it? Man, I think so. I think I'm ready for it. Uh, you want to lead the way? Um, why don't you take the lead on this one? I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious what all you got from uh, chapter four. You know, diving into a little bit. I know last time, I did say you know I I, I couldn't resist jumping ahead a little bit, and I did read chapter four. And I went through chapter four quite a bit. Um, yeah, I think that there's just like everything else. I I mean, if you're if you're truly diving into something, trying to um, trying to gain everything you can from it. I mean, you can really study everything at depth for however long you want to. Um, but before I dive, like before I give my side of it, um, yeah, man, I, w- I want to kind of hear you dive into it first. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. Um, if you're cool with it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I think that a little bit of a synopsis, uh, right off the bat, oop, Bear with me, folks. Got a little bit of a technical difficulty I'm going to deal with right quick. If anybody's a tech individual, let us know. Yeah, we're definitely <laughs> definitely looking for a tech guy or girl because we, uh, man, let me tell you, the apps and stuff we got are awesome, but requires an extra set of hands. If you see me looking down, I'm either looking at the uh, notes or the Bible or running this new app. So um, it's cool camera angles, cool opportunities, and uh, some, some good stuff, but, man, just a little bit different. A little better. There we go. I think we're Something rolling like now. That. I yeah. think we're rolling. Yeah. All right. So Matthew 4, man, uh, right off the bat, talks about the temptation of Jesus. He gets baptized there at the end of chapter 3. Um, and then he's led into the wilderness by the Spirit uh, to be tempted there by the devil. Uh, mm-hmm. It says he spends 40 days and 40 nights out there. Uh, and he was fasting the entire time. Um and I think that's one of the first points that I drew out of it is that, uh, you know, Jesus was in a, uh, he's a humanistic form. Yes, is it's a situation where he's got all these powers and all these, these gifts and, and he is a human uh, image of God walking with man, right? Um, but he's still a man's body, right? So he's susceptible to all these things, and he's susceptible to weakness. And I thought it was really interesting and a, uh, a very relatable spot to see that he was out there for 40 days fasting, came to a point of probably weakness, probably a point where it was much easier to tempt him. Mm-hmm. And then that's when Satan came. It was in a spot where it was he was quote-unquote, at his lowest, right? I say that very loosely because we don't know fully the state, but it reminded me very, very much of the fact that a lot of times whenever I find myself in a spot wherever I'm just exhausted, overwhelmed with work, overwhelmed with personal life and crazy stuff going on, or 
that I've put myself in a situation where I'm, I'm just, I'm overtrained or I'm overstimulated or I'm just kind of stressed out, anxious, done with everything. That's usually when some of my deepest mistakes happen. Yeah. It's usually when some of the hardest battles I face are, whether it's spiritually or whether it's it, honestly in any of these realms. So it's so relatable to me uh, that the fact that once you get to that point of weakness and, and you're trying to defend yourself, you're trying to defend the things you stand for and the morals of it all, it's extremely tough when you get there. So I thought it was kind of ironic that he was there. Well, and I mean... And on the flip side of that too, I mean, not in this uh, situation, but with us as individuals, um, you know, I think that temptation can be just as strong when, you know, we are riding those highs. You know what I mean? Um, I think that that's also a time where, um, you know, that temptation is just as relevant as whenever you're weakest. You you got pride that plays into those scenarios and, and um, power and and stuff like that in in certain situations, um, and we kind of see a lot of that. Um, I mean, really, we see three different aspects or areas um, that the devil tempts Jesus um, throughout this time. That's something that that I noticed. Yeah, I I noticed that as well. Um, it was it it, it is interesting those places that he ends up with. And, and you said the three different places he, he does it with a very calling to the last, I think the last temptation he calls him to greed and worldly possessions, right. With the opportunities to, to have the world, right. He can be given the world. Um, that reiterates the point that, that, you know, the things that you get in your life aren't always for the better. Maybe, maybe it's something you've hoped for. Maybe it's something you've wished for, and talks a little bit about unanswered prayers there as, there as well. But maybe the things that you wish for and the things that you hope for are the things that just land in your life, happen to end up there and seem like such a positive thing, aren't necessarily placed there for the good. Sometimes they're there as a distraction to keep you off of the path that you need to go. There, There is a temptation, just like with Jesus. They're the greed. They're the earthly things that, that take away from you understanding what it is that you need to be taken care of right in your life. And I think that's, that's a very true thing. And then obviously what I was talking about with the the tiredness and the hungriness falls into the first temptation, whenever he talks about turning the stones to bread um, and Jesus responds with it's that physical need that he's tempting you with. It's a physical yeah. need. And, and Jesus responds with a, uh, got it right here in front of me, but um, basically said people do not live uh, by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Right? So it just shows that, that it's bigger than just us and the physical needs and, and the worldly things right here. Um, and the second the second temptation for that um, is basically he presents the opportunity for Jesus to test God, um, to be thrown off the highest temple, basically throw himself off the highest temple and that the angels would save him. Um, and it's something that, that we often do or I, I've done in the past, man, I, I can't speak for everybody, but man, back before I was on this path, back before I understood or even thought this was possible. Um, and I know I'm rambling, so I apologize, but back before I thought a relationship with God was possible, there was always that conversation of show me a sign. Mm-hmm. Show me that you're who you say you are. If you're all powerful and all knowing, then do this for me Then do this. Yep then why isn't this this way? Even the conversations of, it's it's a form of testing whenever you find all of these crazy scenarios and situations in which somebody should be saved, but by definition of the Bible and not being able to know Jesus or whatever it is, how how would that work? Huh? Prove that one to me. That's that's all testing. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what I've been supposed to not be doing. Yeah. And it's it's a prime example there, and and we get just handed that in hand right here as an example in the second temptation. Um, I don't know what you think on that, brother. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it sounds like you know we got a lot of the uh, you know similar ideas out of it. You know, with that first temptation, you know, being so weak and and shoot, man, he was fasting for forty days. 
it'd be tough for me to fast for two days, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, sir. um, and you know, that, that first, um, temptation is that physical need, you know, um, you know, and that second one you, you dove into a little bit, you know, going through and it says, um, then the devil took him up into the holy city set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands, they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. And there's also a reference in there um, for, from first Deuteronomy and Psalms as well. Um, but really, you know, what I took from that is that's also a temptation um, that comes back to uh possession and power essentially yeah um you know it's going through and you know just just really highlighting that temptation and you know God, Jesus being who he is you know the son of God and and in his image um you know strongly defeats that temptation i guess is what you could say in that in that sense yeah that makes a lot of sense i think that's a really good point um, and man, even, even in that, um, he talks about the serving of two masters, uh, you must worship only the Lord, your God and serve him only. Um, and I think, I think at that point right there, very visibly, the devil's asking Jesus to kneel down and worship him. Mm-hmm. But what other idols have there been that we dive into on an earthly basis on a worldly basis and, and just currently, right? I I don't know how many times I've said, man, if I had a little bit more money or if I was able to do this or have this experience or or if I had more time, more time, all, all of these yep. things that, that you obsess over and that you make it your whole MO trying to put into your possession or trying to control, we worship these things and we treat them like the most important, the be all end all. And that falls under the same category of serving two masters. Mm-hmm. And it's something that can be easily overlooked and missed. I think if you're, if you're diving into this and, and not taking it a little bit deeper than face value. Uh, so that was something that struck me uh, yeah. really, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. really hard. Cause I've done that a million times. Well, and to that too, you know, essentially, um, he has given him or he's willing to give him the world and their glory and you know it, it's not just you know the the time and money and, and things like that but I mean all of the um, just all of the materialistic things that, that we tend to um, you know really take focus on today it, it's just kind of saddening like i think at least for for me it's like it puts into perspective of like what's really um you know what is really important you know does that nicer thing actually matter whenever what you have is just fine and i think that's something that i struggle with a little bit too you know i think um you know for me it's also you know i'm always constant i'm I'm consistently trying to progress and push towards that next big thing and I have a habit with that, with, you know, the material side of things. And I think it's something that I can, I, I do fall, uh, fall short on. And, um, you know, it's something that I need to work on myself. Yeah. I, I don't think you're alone in that at all, man. I, I, <laughs> I live in that spot too. And, and I fight those same things. I mean, shoot, <laughs> a prime example of that is, is what we were talking about earlier. The, the, the Traeger <laughs> that, <laughs> that, I mean, smoking good deal. Um, yeah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> um, but I mean, for real though, man, you know, I, I have a classic Coleman, uh, 413G. I'll save you the research. It was built back in the sixties. All right. So obviously, you know, you're going to have some issues with that. You got some, some maintenance that you should be doing with that. And I don't, I, I mean, to be blunt you know i I fix things as they um stop working (laughs) yeah and you know last time is a bad plunger on the gas tank and this time um the regulator isn't working on it and so you know kendall and i were going through costco and and there's a there's a a 
Traeger. I don't know. I think it's a Traeger Ranger is what it might be. Um, but either way, it, it's the it's the portable Traeger. You can go around, use it campsites. Um, is essentially what it is. And you know, I was like, hot dang, like I can I I could use that. My Coleman isn't working at the moment, and it's that next big bigger and better thing for me and instead you know i mean dude i was i was tempted is saying it lightheartedly (laughs) (laughs) and um you know even to that point where like you're going through looking at your accounts like all right if i buy this what is this going to look like you know and uh, trying to justify it and and stuff like that and at the end of the day it's like dude i mean just go buy the 60 dollar part to fix what you have right now and you're just fine I think that that's something that's that's relatable, you know, across so many different instances for for whatever it may be. Um, but I mean, that's a prime example. <laughs> I think that's a that's a very easy example that it would have been easy to overlook, right? Uh, it was just a, a trivial trip to Costco, and it was a trivial thing, something that you love. I mean, you're very yeah. passionate about cooking. You're very passionate about uh, smoking meat and barbecuing, and that would have fit right up your alley. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, crew chief here, man. I got to make sure we got good food. <laughs> That's right. Old crew chief Divin over here. Um, it was good to see you back in the crew chief seat this past weekend, dude. Uh, but that that's a perfect example because it makes all the sense in the world, but you don't need it. I, I don't need it. Right. Yeah. And again, I mean, it, it's, it's something that's just so easy to gloss over. But whenever you are truly um, being self-reflective with stuff like this is like, there's an instance right there. And it, it, it shows to me like how much work I still have to do. I mean, something so trivial as, as a new um, portable grill, essentially, um, you know, like why, why is that such a trivial thing? You know what I mean? And it shouldn't be. Yeah. I, I think that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that too. Cause I mean, yeah. that, <laughs> that probably uh, didn't even scratch the surface or, or it pales in comparison to some of the things that we could talk about and dive into with the temptations and, and those those worldly possessions and greed. And it's very hectic very quickly. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, that's, that's something super lighthearted as well. It's just a gas grill at the end of the day or, or a smoker or whatever it is, right? But, I mean, what about those things that actually hold a lot more weight in your life? Um, you know, what does that look like? I think you're I think you're absolutely right. So. I, I can appreciate that a lot. Definitely a big struggle of mine. Mm-hmm. What else you got under the uh, the tempted spot? I got I got one more point. What else you got? I think something that is kind of. Um, I would say a parent, but should probably be said, you know, obviously we all face um, times of temptation with whatever it may be or tough situations. And you know, I think an easy question you can ask yourself in these times is, you know, one, is this, um, is this, I mean, you could look at one of two ways. One, is this serving uh, a purpose for God's plan in my life, Right. Or two, is this something that Satan is is trying to do to prevent um, that purpose, essentially? So, two different perspectives, kind of leaning towards the same thing. Obviously, you know what 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 does this actually serve? But no, I think that's a fair fair conversation for sure. I think it's something that that definitely matters and and brings a lot of value whenever you think about it. Um, it <laughs> we. We overlook so much, man, and we we try to validate everything with with the most positive opportunity, and most positive light on it, right? We think, oh, it's a blessing. Oh, this is an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, we're just being blind and used with our human emotions, um, and and overseeing a lot of things, and and kind of chunking the bigger picture out the window. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I appreciate that a lot. I think the other thing to keep in mind too is temptation itself isn't sin. That's fair. Temptation itself isn't sin, but it's whenever you actually go through with that act, obviously then it does. 
um, you know, it, it goes along with the, with the struggles and everything else we have. Like you're going to have those issues. You're going to have those struggles. Um, I think you'd be naive if, if you didn't own up to, to that simple fact. Right. But it's being aware of that and knowing that you're going to have to work through those times. So I think that's a great point. I mean, the whole <clears throat> thing starts off right off the bat. Uh, the chapter four, Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Yeah. He, even Jesus was tempted. Yeah. But being as perfect as he is, didn't fall to the sin. And I think that also highlights um, who Jesus is. Like, like that's a simple um, reflection point of like, this is the son of God being that he can resist that temptation perfectly. Yeah. I think that makes a whole lot of sense, man. I, like, I think it's like, yes, obviously it's the son of God, right? Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's just a simple fact to, that, that can easily be glossed over. Like it's a, not that he needs any um, backing in who he is. I mean, that's a, that's a simple, simple, um, example right there. Yeah. I think as people that can't, can't say no to giving into lust or can't say no to, to getting angry or losing our emotions about a situation or or housing anger towards someone else, uh, just because of something they've done and seeking vengeance, right? All these things that fall under sin. I mean, it's so natural Mm -hmm. feeling to do that, right? It's human nature to want that. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's a beautiful separation showing that all of these things that we fall short on all the time, myself included, he had power over. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one big point that I think I, I, I really want to make sure that I drive home to in this, that I took out of the, uh, the temptation of Jesus was that Satan quotes scripture and along with that, Satan knows scripture better than you, better than I, better than probably anyone else that walks this earth, right? Yeah. So with that knowledge, that can be used against us. It can be used to twist. It can be used to manipulate. It can be used to put us in a place where we feel like we're doing the right things for the right reason on paper, Right, but there's that feeling. There's a little bit of change that it's just that ticking away in the back of your head. That man, maybe this isn't right. Maybe I need to reevaluate this. Maybe I need to have some deep self reflection about this. And I think it reiterates how important that is to truly understand and seek out the scripture and and not just take that one verse and spin it however you want to to spin it to say that tattoos are bad or to say that you shouldn't drink alcohol or or to say that you should drink alcohol or or whatever it might be right you shouldn't take that and spin it but you should grab onto the full context surrounding what it is and truly educate yourself and learn and that's encouraged me to dive much deeper and understand like the talking about the laws of Moses I I went back and listen to the whole history of Moses because to understand these laws and what he's expanding upon kind of got to know what, what Moses went through, who he was and, and what these laws were, the commandments, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think that's, that's a point that I wanted to make sure I drove home as well out of that chapter of temptation. No, dude. I mean, I think you, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head on that one. Um, you know, I think it's uh, again, just another easy thing to gloss over. And, um, you know, if you're not paying attention and you're just taking stuff for face value, um, you know, it's just a simple fact that'd be missed. So, yeah, it'd be like just taking at face value that, uh, beans do not go in chili. Um, but moving on, <laughs> moving on, um, if you're good brother, I'd like to jump into the ministry of Jesus, uh, beginning in later in chapter four. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the, uh, at the end of that section, you know, after, after that, you know, he does pick up, um, you know, the four fishermen that follow Jesus. Um, so after that, man, um, jumping into chapter five, correct? Well, I, I want to spend a little bit of time in chapter four, if that's okay. Just a couple more things that I reflect oh, on. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, you're good. <laughs> I, I misunderstood you. No, dude, you're you're good. Ed, like I said, this is part of us learning, right? This is part of us figuring all of this out. There's a little bit more meat on the bone, I think, there. Like going to uh, the ministry of Jesus begin right there at the end of chapter four. Um 
and whenever he starts publicly preaching, there's some some crowds that start to gather and follow. Um, there are some interesting things that I think happened, one of which um, that I drew from is that the theme that you really dive into, of course, uh, that, touching on what you spoke of. You're talking about where he starts preaching throughout Galilee? Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, first, first of which, you touched uh, you touched on a thing that I think is important to talk about: uh, Simon and Peter and uh, James and John all joining as well. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess I did say that a little lightheartedly. Like, poor fishermen. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, by all means, I'm with you. But but that's beautiful in its own way, brother. I will say because a lot of times we put these guys on pedestals, mm-hmm. right? We put all of these followers and the apostles and guys that were there on pedestals to the point of there was something so special about them. There was something so immaculate in their history and their clean records and all the stuff that they did that, you know, how could I ever be like them? How could I ever follow them? How could I ever live up to being something like that? But the truth of the matter is they were just fishermen. Yeah. I mean, they were just fishermen, right? And did they have something within them that made them capable of, of being the people that they needed to be? Yes, yeah. absolutely. But don't we all? And we all do. Exactly. Yeah. We're all just fishermen, right? So I, I actually love the way you said that. So I I don't want to want to walk away with that. But I think something else so beautiful about that situation was their their faith, right? Because they, what did they say? They were asked by Jesus to follow him. And they put down their nets and they left. And they left. And James and John, I know you're thinking of something, but throw no, it go out ahead. There. James and John left their father as well and walked away from him Mm -hmm. and the nets and followed. I think it's important to note, though, too, that they didn't not know who Jesus was, though. That's true. Um, They knew he was a rabbi. Yeah. Um, You know, if you're reading through the chapter, it does say, you know, Jesus walks by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, uh, Simon Peter and Andrew and his brother, casting a net into the sea. Uh, for they were fishermen, you know, and then he asked them to follow them, to which they did. Um, but they did know who he was at that point. It wasn't just a, wasn't just some um, you know, guy walking down the beach like, hey, follow me. You know what I mean? Too. So. I also I looked into it as well. I, I, yes, that's exactly right because he was a known preacher and rabbi, and. I did some research into the history of the Jews back then, mm-hmm. and it was actually a really hard process to be a student of a teacher or a rabbi like that. It was it was a very honorable thing. You actually had to basically request it, and many people did not have that ability to become a student of a rabbi like that. Uh, so having a known rabbi like Jesus come and ask them to follow was also seen as a huge honor. So that's that's part of the reason why it was so easy for them to, to walk. So there's a little bit yeah. of human aspect to it, I think. It is is at least what I've learned in, in, in research as well, right? So I'm curious if you could see if there's pride in that too. There's there, absolutely there is. Um, you know, and that's a that's another temptation point that we've talked about before. And maybe so. maybe that's a maybe that's its own thing where we talk about that sense of pride and that sense of honor right there was a pull and a calling and a sign and a a voice mm-hmm. pushing them towards a purpose. And I'm sure that Jesus being who he was had an air around him as well that that they felt a peace with or, or there was more to it than that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But it, but also there's a little bit of context there with, with them yeah. going and, and yeah, for sure. having faith in him. And so they, they did, and they went, and uh, and I, th- I think that faith at the end of the day is something that's super valuable, and and something I wish I had a little bit more of, you know. <laughs> um, and then as as Jesus starts to travel around the region of Galilee, and he's teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom, um, it says, and he healed every kind of disease and illness. The news about him spread to Syria. People soon began bringing to him all who were sick. And whatever their sickness or disease, or if they were demon-possessed or epileptic or paralyzed, he healed them all. 
And I highlighted and underlined that last part. He healed them all. Um, I thought it was something that was very, very important because you get into him talking about being around the Gentiles and being around all these people that were seen as unclean and unworthy and of other nations. That's what Gentiles are, right? Uh, mm-hmm. They're they're not of Israel or of the Jewish community. Um, and I think it's it's important to understand that there was no prejudice there was no stipulations around it there was no preconceived parameters that he put around it he it was open to every person regardless of their past regardless of their history regardless of what they did yeah i mean there's no limiting factors but i mean it's also um i mean jesus that we're talking about too um you know that there are no limits there and I think it's it's something that's easy to get ourselves wrapped up in. Um, you know, we have a subset of, of, you know, whether it's people that we think we belong to or if it's um, a stigma or, or, or whatever, however you classify yourself, if you do classify yourself. Um, you know, there was none of that there. So, I, I think I think so. And me and you had a conversation while we were running. We had, we, man... Oh, we kind of we wish we could record. A, we should have had that one record. <laughs> yeah, but we we had an amazing conversation this morning on our yeah. nine mile run, uh, four forty five in the morning, um, just on the back roads, probably disturbing the neighborhood. Um, but it was this beautiful conversation of the fact that, I mean, I, one thing I shared was I have been so against walking this path and going this this route because I felt so unworthy. Mm-hmm. I felt like I had to fix everything about myself to be even consider decent in the eyes of God or, or even be considered to have the opportunity to bring myself to it or, or try to learn or try to to repair myself and fix the brokenness that, that I deal with. Because there's, man, I don't know what y'all see. I might look just as broken on the outside as I do on the inside, but I'd, surely there is a lot more going on in every single person, including myself. And I fought that unworthiness. I fought, I fought the, the fact that I had to get my stuff together and then come here. And then come. Yeah. And that's not the case. No, man. And that's something that I, I wanted to touch base on, you know, last time too. Um, you know, we were going through and also talking about, you know, being a reprobate mind and, and um, we were talking about, you know, everybody that's coming through and, and dealing, you know, whether they're drug addicts or alcoholics or, or thieves or, you know, whatever it may be. I think, you know, a lot of folks do believe that you have to have your stuff squared away before you are able to turn to God. And, man, I mean, <laughs> I can be more thankful that that is not the case. Because if that was the case, then we would probably never get there. Yeah. Um, you know, growing up, that I mean, that that's at least what was um, taught to taught to us growing up. And you know, come as you are. You know, all of your issues. Um, you know, whatever it may be, and you know, God is there for you. And it's at that point that you know, there's no better time than now, just like everything else. Um, it is okay in, to come as you are. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to wear the nicest clothes out there. You don't have to be prim and proper or, or whatever that may look like. Um, those parameters there too, they don't exist, man. I think at the end of the day, it's, it's just God wants that relationship with us with whatever stage we're in. Um, we just have to be willing to turn around and, and, and face him and, and have that relationship. I think that's a beautiful point. I think it's a very important thing, thing to look at and coming as you are and, and being that person and coming broken and finding your way as a broken person. It, it, it ties directly into something that I think, I think people potentially miss and I missed it for a long time too, Mm -hmm. but the definition of repentance, right? Because we're, we're called to repent, right? 
And that, that's one of the biggest, biggest things about coming to Christ is, is to repent. And whenever we really look at that definition, it's to feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. And I highlighted sincere. Right? You have to truly want the change and truly have to be different. But even within that, there's an imp- there's there's things that are implied there, right? Yeah, I mean it's all about the posture of your heart. Well, yes, and and yeah. more more than that to me, and in what it, what I grabbed onto from it is that if there's an implication there, and, and it implies that you have to repent, that would say that somewhere along the lines, you had to have been unworthy. Mm-hmm. You had to have sinned. You had to have walked a path that was less than desirable in the eyes of God. And if you're anything like me, I've lived that. Yeah. Oh, we got a baby freaking out in the background. So <laughs> if you hear it, that's what it is. Um, but we've lived that, right? I'm mean, going to think everybody has. Or everybody is. Yeah. And, and so we're not called to be <clears throat> perfect. We're not called to, to fix ourselves and then show up. Right, we're we're called to repent because we've got a past. We're not perfect. We're human. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's beautiful because it's it's often missed. It's almost like you have to understand. You have to walk that path. It's just like you and me with the weight loss and stopping drinking and and doing all this running. We had to be somewhere to get the motivating factors and to get all of the other things that pushed us to where we are now. Mm-hmm. Right. That that is that is a form of repentance by definition. Right. And here we are full circle. The truth of the matter. Did you come broken? And through Christ, you fix yourself. Yeah. I mean, he fixes you. I couldn't say it any better. Absolutely. I think it's something that, you know, Folks, I mean, you just got to keep that in mind. It's We are never going to be perfect either. However, you can always strive to do so um, by trying to live in the likes of him. So. I, I think that's. I think that's it, man. And we we talked about that too, man. <laughs> kind of a full circle thing this morning about living in the <laughs> likes of Him. Uh, not to dwell too far into this, I'd, I'd like to jump into chapter five. I know we need to keep this thing rolling. Yeah, but, let's keep on going, man. Um, the the full circle <laughs> thing was that we're called to be more like Jesus, who loves all. So we're called to love all. We're called to treat all with respect and to help everyone we can. And to live a life that is that is serving to others. But then at the same time, we're called to treat others as we would want to be treated. So full circle, that brings back to a point of this all and, and a spot that kept me from coming this direction as well is, is a huge lacking of self-love, self-respect, Respect. self-acknowledgement that I'm broken but trying and that's okay. I, I've been so hard on myself. I've, I've torn myself apart over and over. But whenever you look at it full circle... We're called to not do that. We're called to treat ourselves like we treat others. But through that, we're treating others the way they deserve to be treated. And it's it's a weird, backwards, kind of selfishly, unselfish, full circle thing that yeah, it just kind of it, it grabbed onto me and, and it made a lot of sense in the moment to me because... because Everything that I've done, all the issues that I've had, especially with people lately, whether it's work, whether it's personal, whether it's just any aspect of my life, it circles back to myself. There's a reason inside of me that I'm doing the things that I'm doing and that I feel the way that I feel. And fixing myself and loving myself will do a lot to repair those things. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. That's, that's all I got for Chapter 4. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that... Uh, I think I'm right there with you, man. So there's, I don't know, man. I, again, you can just take so much from all of it, and it's just taking what you learn and, and trying to apply it in everything that we do is what it comes back to. Um, and chapter five is literally the epitome of that. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like this thing's supposed to tie together really well or something. <laughs> For some crazy reason. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm in mean, chapter, chapter 5. It goes into the sermon that Jesus gives on the mount. So, um, you know, right off the bat, um, you know, looking at verse 3, 3 through 6, um, you know, really stuck out to me quite a bit. Really, I mean, 3 through 10. Right, but the entire um, beatitudes. Yeah, all of it, it. It just it hits you like a rock. Um, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Um, you know, going going forward through there. You know, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pe- the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I th- I think that one of the one of the things like kind of an undertone of that, and I I think in some ways that's shocking, right? It's surprising. It's not what you'd expect. So maybe. it's probably the opposite of what you would you would naturally think, right? And we're not alone in that. And what I mean is that many of the Jews, Jewish people, the Jews, uh, thought that Jesus would come as a warrior Messiah. Mm-hmm. They thought he would come as the righteous hand of God to slay the Romans, set the Jewish people free, and to carry out the will of God in that way, in a very aggressive, in a very spiteful and vengeful Mm -hmm. way, right? And then he gets up on the mountain, he starts preaching these things about the meek, or I think there's a few more interpretations to say the humble will inherit the earth. Yeah. The, like you talked about, God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And then you dive into, God blesses those who work for peace. I mean, what? Bl- blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, I, like, there, <laughs> there's so many different different things where it's like man, that couldn't have been what most of the Jewish people expected, right? At, at least, at least the men that probably had just as much testosterone coursing through their veins as you and I do, and, and were spoiling for a fight after all of the oppression, all of the laws, and having to build temples. And having to build structures for the worship of gods that they didn't believe in for the Romans, right? I mean, there's there's a there's a huge laundry list of why this guy should come down. He should smite all of them, move them on out, and use the sword. All will be fine and dandy. Yeah, and boom, there it was. Different. Yeah. So what? A, like, first off, like the Sermon of the Mount. The Beatitudes, what, what a shocking thing right off the bat. Um, and, man, I I took so many different things away from, from this. I Not to steal the, the light from you, but uh, the poor. The poor aren't just people who are broke, you know, but people who are broken, like we talked about. right? It's, it's more than just monetarily not having money. It's those who live without something in their life. They're missing whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Most of it's spiritually. But there are things like sight, ability to walk, physical aspects, right? Ability to, to get up and, and be active. And there's other things like brokenhearted and emotional side of things and, and the mental side as well and, and have been through all kinds of things and they're depraved because they don't have something they don't have a steady a constant and a rock in their life and from that poorness and that broke or brokenness God is the way of mending the brokenness that, that's what I took away from from Matthew 5 uh, 3 through 5 of the Beatitudes verses yeah. 3 through 5 I there, there was one thing that I was um, kind of going back and forth on. You know, that very first verse, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit. Mm-hmm. But 
it doesn't dive into why are they poor in spirit is it because they have given so much of themselves to the church of christ and the church is the people itself right or is it the literal meaning of poor in 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 everything that you just said you know what i mean that, that's a great question I mean, it, it's just something that I've, that I've been pondering, you know, back and forth since I was reading it. And, um, you know, either way, it is a contradictory statement, as they all are. Um, it's something that we don't, that we typically wouldn't see or, or think of, just in general. But I think, you know, going through and kind of looking at the Beatitudes and that lot of things, you know, why is it that why are those who are mourning you know what is it that they're mourning for is it those that are lost and there's nothing to comfort that can comfort them outside of the holy spirit you know what i mean that's a fair question as well i mean i i don't know i mean why are the meek meek <laughs> i mean and, and we can play this game with all of them um but it's just uh, it's it was something that I was pondering back and forth on too. Um, I think that you can look at all the beatitudes in, in a couple different lights for sure. So I, I certainly think you can, and I I think we could we could spend a lot of time here. And man, I, I know I spent a lot of time in studying and and looking at those and and like you talked about with the the humble and and the the meek, right? And, I do, I do like Jordan Peterson's interpretation of it and, and the conversation that's to be had about the meek will inherit the earth and, and understanding that meek are not people that are incapable human beings. Especially, for, I'll say this from a man's point of view, and, and I say it from a man's point of view because that's, that's the life I live, that's the experience I have. Being meek or being humble implies that there is something that is the opposite of that, that you're choosing not to be, right? And Jordan Peterson talks about becoming a monster and learning how to control it, and, and that's the meekness, is, is not bringing out the monster that you're capable of being, but controlling it, right? I think that ties so well into verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers. I don't think that you can have peace if you don't know what violence is. Well, you got to have it, it, it's, it's like, like a bargain, bargain right? right? It, the the peace between two parties, if it's one sided, if all the danger, if all the value, whatever it is, is on one side, unless that one side is merciful or fair, the peace isn't going to exist. They're going to do whatever they want. They're going to run over anybody. But you're right it implies that you've got to have some kind of buying power on your side you've got to have the force you've got to have the ability you've got to have a little bit of the capital side of things with the money or whatever it is right you got you got to be capable is what i'm getting at yeah absolutely so i i, I do like that a lot well and i think that what you just said just now you, you have to be capable i think that highlights the fact that as followers of christ we're, we're not, you're not supposed to you're not, not supposed, supposed to be, to be but, but you, you, you are, are not, not people, people that just idly sit, sit by, right? right? I think, I think that, that that's a perception that, that's, that's commonly um, seen as, as you're just weak individuals, individuals that, that this is what I am. I can't go against the grain. I'm just, I'm just supposed to be cool with it and, and not stand up for anything in some sort of sense, right? Yeah. Besides following the word of Christ, but I think it's also or more, more so, so that you, you are, are capable, capable of all of these things, things but you're choosing to be um, in control. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. That's fair. I think that's a really good point, man. I think, I think it is, and I, man... I'm gonna keep saying stuff that's gonna get a shadow banned, um, but but um, come on with it, man. You know how much evil there is out there in this world right now. You know how much selfishness, how 
How about, how about this? this? Besides the negative side of that, let's go a little positive loop. You know how many opportunities there are for us to stand up as men and stand up as strong women and to stand for something right and to do something the way we know it needs to be done, to stand up to all this crap. Man, I saw an article that made my freaking skin crawl. It was posted on Andy Priscilla's story. It wasn't the Houston thing, was it? It was the Houston thing. And I, if y'all know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to get too far into it. But there's two, a group of seven individuals that is brutal. Did some very, very heinous things. Yeah. To a couple of toddlers. Yeah. And it's hard to read. It's very hard to read. And to me, I, man, I, I know we're sitting here talking about, talking about things in the Bible that kind of, kind of contradict this. But if you aren't a human being that is strong and capable and willing to stand up against those things and isn't at a point where you can see something like that and that not just make you want to do something, to take action, or just simply... To train yourself. If you're not affected by it. That, that, if you're yeah. not affected by it. You've got to do something. You it, Put in the work. Figure out what it is that you can do so that this doesn't happen to you or your family. If it doesn't put you in a situation like that, then, then I don't think you're living this path either. And because we are called to be capable of stopping those things and be capable of getting rid of that evil because that's what that is it is pure evil and i don't know i i think that each and every one of us has a duty and this meekness and humbleness implies the other side the peace implies the other side it it implies the ability the capability and getting yourself to a point to where you can handle these things and this business whenever it comes up and i think it's our job i think it's our place to be capable and ready to stop these things because they're becoming so much more prevalent and ready and happening just all over. That's close to home. Houston's a few hours from here. Yep. We used to live in Houston. So it used to be home, man. Yeah. It, man, I don't know. If if that doesn't if that doesn't get you to stand on your morals and use those things as a reason to get somewhere you need to be or to have a motivation to be proactive against a situation like that, then I don't, I don't know what you're doing here, honestly. Um, I not, mean, not to get too negative. Sorry, man. No, for sure. But I mean, if that doesn't do it for you, you know, I'm not certain what will. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the innocence of two children and, and you know, what they, what they went through. Um, brother, I mean, not, it's hard to even comprehend. I, I don't know where that. I, I don't know how that kind of evil would even live here, man. Yeah. Um, but shifting gears again. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not sorry about it. But shifting gears. Matthew five verse ten was another one that hit me really hard, and it talked about the persecution, and in the form of persecution here, uh, what it's really discussing is, um, God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. That ties directly into what we just talked about as well. Yeah, absolutely. Persecuted for those doing right. Um, Because it it is just a beautiful example of that. But from another standpoint, persecution is not just law. We look at it as being arrested, thrown in prison for something that we did or didn't do. And it was right or wrong or whatever. But it's more than that, right? We stand on our values. We stand on our morals. And for this, we stand on the principles of God and for the kingdom of heaven. And the persecution isn't just a law. It's all those individuals around that stand and judge us. Right. All all the family members that that persecute you with their thoughts and their side conversations and all of the things that they say behind your back when you're not looking and the things that hurt us, right? And that's another form of persecution. 
it's getting reprimanded at work for something that happened there. You made a call that was the right decision to take care of your employee, but it didn't fit the narrative of taking care of the company first. And you got reprimanded. Yeah. That's persecution. Those are all things that we got to live in. Those are tangible things. We might be sitting here thinking about how we can, we can stand up to all this evil and do all these things in, in, in life. And yeah, we should stand up to those things, but that's not the daily norm, but there is opportunities to stand strong in the face of this persecution all the time. I think morally and as strong individuals, strong men, strong women, we have an obligation to that. And it clearly states that in verse 10, that blessed are those who are persecuted for doing right. Yep. I mean, dude, in, you know, in society itself today, I mean, (laughs) if you just open your eyes and start paying attention to, to those things, I mean, there's, a multitude of opportunities there and um you know it's just making that decision at the end of the day that's what it comes down to so couldn't agree with you more brother um you know uh we said we were going to get through chapter four and five today uh but man we're getting a little long in the tooth here are we where we, we are, man we are an hour and uh, 22 minutes into this podcast so i I would either, I'll let you make the call. You tell me what you want to do. You want to dive into salt and light or you want to call it here and move, uh, finish with the Beatitudes for now and, and dive into the rest of chapter five next week. Well, uh, you know, when we call it with the Beatitudes, um, I do want to end on a positive note. Not saying that the Beatitudes aren't by any means or or anything that we talked about, right? No, I agree. I agree. I challenge y'all, you know, y'all are going through this with us, you know, go through, read, um, about the salt and the light and, and, and really challenge yourself to, to see, um, you know, what that looks like in your own life. Yeah. I, I think that's a beautiful thing. I, I think that, uh, I think that there's a lot of ways to let our light shine and to keep our saltiness and, and to share that that flavor that we are with ourselves or with the world. Right. And that's what it, the salt and the light really discusses is, is that light. And, and, and it talks about it through Christ and, and sharing, uh, the, the light in the gospel and the good word and, and all of those things and our talents that mm-hmm. we have and we've been blessed with. And, and so there's your context around that, but, but yeah, think about those things that you've got. Think about the things that make you special that draw people towards you. Right. The, the things that people always come to you for. Mm-hmm. Right. And think about the intricacies of that. And, and that'd be something cool to consider as we dive deeper into salt and light and, and the rest of what chapter chapter five has to offer. We might not even make it to chapter six. Just yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, Man, that, I, just, I don't think we can really uh, put down, you know, how many chapters we're going to be getting through on these on these episodes. <laughs> sure enough. No, but if, if y'all want to participate or or be part of this, let us know. I mean, we're, I want to put this out there. Uh, tell me to shut up if I don't need to talk about it yet. But um, we've even talked about doing a study group, um, doing an mm-hmm. accountability kind of group as well. I mean, there's a million different ways we could go with it. Um, giving the opportunity to review and study these things and talk about them. And then we'll share the points on the podcast. Uh, you can stay anonymous with it, uh, or you can dive in and we can mention who you are. Uh, but if you'd be interested in, an hour uh, or two study session of a week just diving into this. Like I said, there's no pressure because we're so new into this. Uh, we don't know what we're doing fully, but we're trying to learn and we're spending a lot of time studying and it's been helping. Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, we're just trying to be intentional with, with this whole process, just like everything else. And, you know, I, I think that's what it comes down to. You know, we're not going to get everything down pat the first time. And if, if we did, you know, I think that that would take away from the, uh, from the importance of it all. So, yeah, if, if we did, we would, uh, we would be so alike in our walk with Christ to him that, um, yeah, we <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be, the, <laughs> wouldn't be a purpose behind what we're doing here. But I, I, I think we're far from that. We both agree. And, and yeah. So if you're interested in that, we'd love to put together a, uh, a, a, zoom call or google meets or or some kind of meeting um love to do it in person but we know everybody's so spread out uh but 
something like that. If y'all are interested, yeah, comment, absolutely. shoot us a DM. Uh, you can reach us Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok at Next Line Development on all of those platforms. That's a good place to list uh, to to get with us on that. Um, man, that's that's kind of what I got. Yes, brother. I mean, I think we. I think we got it all on this one. Um, you know, folks, if, if you're finding any value from this too, you know, please share the show. Um, you know, we're we're trying to grow this community next in line, and it's not about Chance and I, but it's about y'all. Um, it's about bringing um, folks together of same mind and, and trying to continue developing ourselves the best we can. Yeah, I mean it. It's it's cool where this has gone. Just to give y'all some context, I mean we've we've helped. A lot of people with workout plans. We've helped a lot of people with ways of losing weight. Uh, helped a lot of people with just professional development too. Professional development and, yep. and counseling through tough situations that we've been a part of. Um, but we've also got a network of individuals that are very experienced and talented um, that all have different walks of life that we would be glad to connect you with those people that fit your situation that can help. Right, that's that's what we're here to do, to connect people and to help each and every one of you that listens to this podcast and everyone else possible develop spiritually, mentally, and physically. So we do runs, workouts, people like to run ultra marathons, people like to run half marathons, marathons, five Ks, whatever your level is, just a mile. Just getting out there. We want to help. Yep, absolutely. That's what it comes back to you, man. So but other than that, you got anything else, man? Man, I think that's all I got for now. Cool. Well, let's hit it. Well, folks, uh, make sure you put beans in your chili and always be prepared for whatever is. <laughs> Next in line, and it ain't beans. <laughs> Thank you all.